Hey there. Um, so I haven't done a how-to video in quite a while, and I think the reason why is I uh, really can't come up with a better way to top how all these other great teachers are, are doing their thing, because um, I'm still a student myself. But that said, I did get a question. Um, I think someone had watched one of my beginner how-to play ban banjo videos, and they were asking me how how I can get it so that when I strike the strings, I can I can have that precision where uh, that middle fingernail as it comes down and it does that strike how is it so that I don't miss the string or accidentally hit the head and I hate to say this but the answer is not uh, it's an easy answer but it's not easy to do and the answer is just practice um, nobody likes to hear that nobody wants to hear do this thing 10,000 times I want to know the, the kind of quick and dirty way of doing this um, and I think the reason why is because there's two ways two ways we learn a thing. We we learn things in our minds, and you know, you watch a video, you read a book, and you go, okay, cool, I get that. But then there's the physical thing where you have to just do it so much that it becomes reflex. And this is one of those things you want it to become reflex. So um, the way I do it is I just make kind of a game for myself. Um, so that it stays interesting because striking a string 10,000 times is going to get kind of boring. So um, so we're talking about j just, you know. Right, being able to, with precision, hit the right string when you want to. Um, if you haven't seen my beginner videos, it, you know, I start with the whole rhythm. The, maybe you've heard that basic frailing strum kind of a pattern going on and and now you're ready to break that out what really makes that that magic work aside from some basic chord shapes that I'm doing right there is just you're kind of picking out the string that's right for the melody and really you got four strings to choose from but uh, you know how do you do that um, well we can talk about the actual shape right so we know that the middle fingernail it comes down kind of kind of hammers down you kind of want it to just come down towards the head now I have a real bad habit of moving my wrist, so don't copy me too much. But the right way to do it is you should be moving your arm more than your wrist. So, and that middle fingernail should be coming down, kind of like a guitar pick. It's almost like a 45 degree angle. Like ideally, you just kind of come right towards the head. And you can just practice that over and over and over and over again. Um, that's really all there is to it. But if you want to keep it interesting, well, I say while you're doing that, just change up the chords a little bit, you know. So maybe I'll, I'll throw on a, an A minor shape and just kind of make some pattern. As you can see, I'm practicing my chord shapes, the changing of the chords, which is really a different lesson. But I'm also just kind of focusing on doing what they call a double thumb. Um, a double, th not a double thumb, yeah, it's a double thumb. <laughs> no editing. Um, double thumb is just basically when you go strike thumb, strike strum, strike thumb, strike thumb, strike thumb, strike thumb, and you just do it really fast. Um, if, you, uh, if you watch some of the other teachers, they uh, where they focus more on a melodic style instead of a strumming style, um, they're going to be real heavy with that thumb. And that thumb is a great way to break those quarter notes in half, right? So it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And and if you're new to that, the best string to start on is that, that first string. And I'm calling the bottom string here the first string. Do 
that about a hundred times. And then when you feel comfortable, then you close the little webbing between your thumb and your finger, kind of just close it up a little bit, and you just go to that second string. And the third. slap a chord on. It doesn't have to be sequential, you can kind of mix it up, but really it's just getting comfortable with the different, the distance of that webbing between your thumb and your finger, right? The arm is hopefully just kind of coming down in a single motion. You're not really bending your wrist when you strum. You don't want to do that. You just, you really want to do this. Keep your wrist straight. See how my, my thumb, the webbing is kind of going? Like hopefully that line between the, the bone from your middle finger, the knuckles kind of lined up with your whole wrist. And the idea is there's like no strain whatsoever. This is the most laid back feeling. The, the cool thing is you're not doing some meticulous thing that's gonna make your wrist hurt after doing this for an hour. You could really watch TV for like three hours and do this and not feel a thing if you're doing it right. If it's hurting, look at how your wrist is shaped. You know, you don't want to be doing this. You don't you don't want your thumb to be kind of all jagged like that. You know, you, you just want it to be natural. Right? So, uh, again, the only thing I can really recommend about getting to the point where you hit the right string, the string that you want to hit to get that melody is just practice. But in the meantime, don't worry about making mistakes. I mean, the cool thing is as long as you keep the rhythm, it doesn't matter what string you hit. As long as you have that chord shape, you're in the key, you can still play your songs. Um, as you get better, you can kind of pronounce that melody a little more by hitting the right strings, so. chord shapes I'm really just doing that it's really the G major scale um, just kind of the right so the A minor that's just I think this the sixth chord on the G major scale so you just happen to put your finger in all those places where you would hammer down anyway so that's a nice convenient way to find where the melody could be Make a game out of it. Um, make make music while you're practicing so you don't get bored because that's really what you're trying to overcome there is is the feeling of if, if you just did this for like 10,000 times you're gonna get really bored and go why am I doing this right right you want it you want to have some sort of music to it that's why the basic frailing strum is kind of cool because it's kind of like your training wheels to playing music with a banjo right? You can do that simple little pattern and play all the songs. Maybe that's as good as you ever want to get. Go faster.
like training wheels as you're coasting along on that bike you can see how far you can go pedaling without actually having the bike land on any one of those side wheels right it's the same thing with banjo right you start with your basic frailing strum and then you try to see how far you can go melodically without having to do that strum I've been playing banjo how long and I'm still making mistakes. The key is just to play through it and not worry about it. Um, but yeah, just the only way to get to the point where you can hit the string you want to hit is just practicing. Alright, I hope that helps. And um, Sorry if I haven't been posting a lot of how-to banjo videos. I, it's just kind of hard to come up with ideas. So um, mostly I'll post songs and, and maybe see if uh, you can kind of see how my style of playing can be applied to a wide variety of songs. Um, but uh, yeah, if anybody has any other questions or techniques you'd like me to focus on, uh, drop a comment and I'll, uh, I'll see if I can whip up a video.